around as if you want to hear a story about a brave engineer. Now, Casey Jones bounced around his name on a six-page wheel, a boy, he won his fame. The caller called Casey had a half ass soul. He kissed his wife there at the station door. He mounted to the cabin with his orders in his hands, took his farewell trip to the promised land. Casey Jones mounted to the cabin. Casey Jones with his orders in his hand. Casey Jones. Hello again, this is Mike with Toy Train Tips and Tricks. And today's video was inspired by an old Lionel wiring diagram that I found in a Lionel operator's manual. And this diagram showed how you could operate two trains on a single loop with no collisions. Automatic lock control using no fancy electronics or relays or computers. Of course, this diagram's from the 50s before everybody had home computers anyway. But this method uses only a 153C connector, a couple of lock-ons, uh, some wire, and a couple of insulated sections of track. No track modifications are necessary, just insulating the center rail. You can get by without the lock-ons if you do soldering on your wires. I'm setting this up temporarily, so I was using the lock-ons. Um, and uh, let's see how it works. So at first, I looked at the diagram, you see here, and it seems pretty straightforward that as train A, that's going to be our Rio Grande train up here, our Jeep 7 up here, when it goes over the section with the 153C connector here in the dark, um, it makes a selection. And I'm, here we can see with the 153C connector, it's an ingenious little device. You have one input and two outputs. And the output is selected by the position of a contact with a spring right here. So as the train comes by and it forces the contact down, it makes contact with this one. And when there's no train and the spring pushes it up, makes contact with this one. And you adjust the t tension by adjusting this nut on the spring. Now this 153C connector, it came with Lionel's block signals, semaphores, sometimes the crossing gates. And a lot of operators don't use them for the block signals for the reason that in addition to having your on and off, you can also get it into a position where it makes contact with neither. And in that case, um, your signal would be blank, neither red nor green. In our case, we're just using it as a simple on-off device, not an either-or. So all we have to do is adjust the spring so that the weight will discontinue the contact with our top selection. When there's no train, we have power to the top. When there is a train of any weight at all, it presses down and disconnects our connection here, which kills the power to, in this case, this section of track, which we're going to call our stop section, and train B here with our, our GM50 GP7. When this train leaves, the spring goes back up, restores power to this wire, which comes over here to our lock-on, which restores power to the center rail here, and train number two goes merrily along. So I hooked it up. The theory is simple, and it failed spectacularly. Um, <laughs> I had trains colliding everywhere, and I just could not figure out what I was doing wrong. I tried different combinations of locomotives and trains, and I tried different distances between the contactors, and no matter what I did, one train would always collide with the other for the reason that when the, a train would hit this stop section, once power was restored, um, this locomotive would have to overcome the inertia of being stopped, and it takes some time to build up speed again to get back to track speed. Meanwhile, the other train is still operating at full speed, closes the gap, and slams into the caboose. So there had to be some way to overcome the inertia. And finally, after really looking hard at the Lionel diagram, I found out that the answer was there all along, and that answer was called a multivolt transformer. 
Nearly every one of Lionel's post-war Transformers, from the lowly 1033 all the way up to the ZW, is some sort of a multi-volt transformer, meaning that by attaching your wires to different posts, you get different voltages, whether fixed or variable. Um, and so you can set up two different circuits using the same variable power to the track, but by having wires to one set of track be, for example, 11 volts maximum, and another set being 16 volts maximum, you can wire it up so that one section uh, gets a boost or slows down relative to the other train. And that's exactly what we see here in Lionel's track diagram. So you can either use a multi-volt transformer with the lower voltage going to our control train, the higher voltage going to our stopped train, or you can use two separate transformers that are phased together. By doing this, the stopped train has an extra burst of power to overcome the inertia of being stopped. It quickly resumes track speed and clears the stop block before the other train approaches. So let's walk through our wiring. On this track, we have our 153C uh, contactor. All we have to do with this is make sure that we pull up some of the, the screws and nails so that the track, well, I don't know if you can see that, um, will be loose enough that as the train goes by, we'll activate the spring. Our input is our lower voltage track voltage, or I'm sorry, our higher voltage track voltage. The lower voltage is just your regular track power that goes to the rest of the layout. This is the higher voltage that's going to control our stop section. It comes in here, um, and it goes out here unless there is a train here. When there's a train here, it cuts the power to our stop section. Our stop section, I'm using this lock on, and here is that same yellow wire coming from the 153C going to the center rail. We are insulated here, well actually here, and here, this is my drawbridge section, um, so the track is actually separated there. So this track is our insulated stop section. Uh, it's about three sections long, which is about the minimum you need for this. The stop section needs to be long enough not only to handle the length of your locomotive, but any momentum uh, that the locomotive would have from running through the block. Uh, if it's too short, the speed of the locomotive could take it and connect back to the live track and run around. So you want it long enough um, so that you can stop the train completely. And that's pretty much all there is to it. When train A is in the section, it turns off the power to this. Train B comes up and stops until this train clears the contactor and power is restored. Then this one quickly comes up to speed while the other one comes around the loop behind it and so on and so on. A couple of tips. One, make sure both locomotives have their E units, their reverse units, turned off. Otherwise, when power is restored, you'll go into neutral. The other train will come up and collide with the rear. Um, or in a two-position reverse unit, it'll go into reverse and speed up the collision process. So make sure you're both locked into your forward position. S step two, try to get your locomotives, uh, try to pick two that run pretty close at the same speed together. You'll see in my video here that the GM50 runs a little bit brighter than the Rio Grande and tends to close the gap a little bit. Uh, later on, I fix that um, by adding an extra car. Uh, you don't see that in my operating video, but that did help. Adding a third car slowed it down just enough that they run about the same. Uh, thirdly, make sure that your trains are not too big for your loop, that there is plenty of running room from one train to the next um, to accommodate uh, your lack of collisions. Um, and if you are using the two transformer method, I find it's best, I found that it's best to use two older style transformers 
rather than the newer ones, uh, 2000 and newer. Uh, the newer transformers are a little bit more sensitive to tracks, uh, to power surges, and when the locomotive comes across and bridges uh, for just a brief microsecond, you will have power from both going into the motor, and that can cause a feedback loop and uh, kick your circuit breaker. Um, I'm using older Pullmore motors, and I'm using older style transformers, so yeah, there is a short power spike. One, I'm using a TVS diode that'll knock that down a little bit, but secondly, I'm not using modern electronics, so there's really not a lot here that I can fry uh, in the process. Uh, I'm just doing this temporarily because I had to redo the track work for this inner loop anyway. My uh, uh, <coughs> Secretary of the Interior informs me we need to make some changes to the room, and that is requiring me to change the track plan a little bit. And since I'm doing that, a eh, good opportunity to try some of these uh, temporary setups. Um, so here we go. Let's see how it works in three, two, one. <laughs> Before he died, there were two more roads that he wanted to ride. The farmer said, what can they be? It's the Southern Pacific and the Santa Fe. Mrs. Jones sat on a bed of sign. Just received the message that Casey was dying. Said, go to bed. All right, and as you can see on the track diagram, on the wiring diagram, it's also possible to incorporate this uh, with a block signal or semaphore. Unfortunately, none of my block signals are operating at the moment, um, but simply... Um, with the 153, uh, if you have the track power to one side going to, to, the, uh, to the green, and when the 153C switches, it'll uh, contact switch to the red for the stop, and back and forth. And the wiring diagram shows you clearly how to do that. Um, and it's similar to do that also with a semaphore. That's a simple on-off um, system. So with or without signals, that is the system. So, until next time, share it, like it, subscribe, tell your friends, tell your neighbors, and until then, let's keep the trains running.